These are a little bit more complex run franchises where you can wind up having it more manager run at some point. You're not running the day-to-day -day operations of the business or there every day, uh, but you are involved in the business. Welcome, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the seven different types of franchise ownership explained. Make sure you stick around for this video because if you're interested in franchise ownership, it's so important that you know the different types of ownership, how they work, the pros and cons, how it can affect you and your decision-making in the process to save you or make you some money. So let's jump in. All right, guys, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Tarek Johnson. I built a multi-million dollar franchise business owning franchises in two different states, in California and Florida, all the way across the country. And in this video, again, we're gonna talk about the seven different types of franchise ownership and really explain to you the pros and cons and how they work. As you go through this video, if you enjoy it and get value, give me a thumbs up, hit the like button. Helps the YouTube algorithm show this video to more and more people. Um, also, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I've got a ton of videos on franchise over ownership overall, so let's jump in. All right, the first type of ownership for a franchise is what's called the owner-operator franchise model. So owner-operator franchise model, is a, it's pretty self-explanatory. You are the owner and the operator of that business, basically meaning you are in the day-to-day -day of that business uh, pretty much every day. Um, so. A good example of this would be like a, a moving business, a moving company. One franchise would be uh, college hunks, uh, uh, junk hauling and moving. So as an example, you might be in your business every day uh, managing your staff and the logistics and, and uh, getting new calls from potential customers and going out and doing bids or, or different things like that. That's, uh, that's a franchise that you might be involved in on a day-to-day -day basis. Or like a fire and water restoration company or like a mold remediation company like ServPro. ServPro is a franchise. These are a little bit more complex run franchises where you can wind up having it more manager run at some point. Uh, but most of the time in the beginning, it's probably gonna be owner-operator run. So important to think about an owner-operator franchise. Some people call it buying a job. Uh, it does depend though, because some people can be owner operator in a franchise in which they don't need to be the operator of the franchise. But that's number one, owner operator. The second type of franchise is semi-absentee ownership. So this is what I was involved in when I owned my juice bars. I still own one, so I, I technically am still semi-absentee, but a semi-absentee business is basically when you're not running the day-to-day -day operations of the business or there every day, uh, but you are involved in the business. You might go there once a week, twice a week, couple days a week. Uh, you're managing the manager. You still have some sort of role in the business. So examples like this could be juice bar, food services businesses, uh, let's say uh, yogurt shops would be an example of semi-absentee run businesses, maybe like a car wash could be a semi-absentee run business. So again, it's something that you're working on the business, but not necessarily in the business. All right, number three is the absentee or executive run franchise model. And basically absentee, you're absent, right? So you're not, you're basically not in the business. You are managing the manager primarily and maybe just the financial statements, you're reviewing those, you really don't go to the business, you don't have any involvement in the day-to-day -day of the business and you're pretty much just communicating with your manager. So this could be something like a fitness franchise or a 24-hour uh, fitness franchise. This is where it, I don't wanna say it starts to get complex but there are nuances and it, and it depends on what situation you're in and then how many franchises because a franchise that if you only have one may be an owner operator model if you have multiple you're able to turn it into a semi-absentee or an executive model does that make sense 
I'll talk about it in just a second. Now, the other sort of franchise ownership is what I would call the investor model, which is literally where you have nothing to do with the management of the business. You don't manage a manager. Uh, you literally are just putting up your capital and maybe you have an operating partner, but you're still considered a franchise owner. Most people probably what the rarest form of franchise ownership that, uh, that exists, uh, but it is one that does exist, so it's important to think about. It's important to think about for you, if you wind up needing an investor or partner in a business, you can have someone sign the franchise agreement. Let's say if your net worth doesn't meet the requirements of the franchisor, you can have someone become your partner, they become an investor, you just give them a specific return on the money that they invested and then you're the owner operator of actually operating the business. So very interesting. Now let's talk about number, number uh, five, which is then single unit franchisee. So single unit franchisee, again, that's pretty self-explanatory. That's when you own one franchise location. And so when you only own one franchise location, most of these operations are gonna start out as an owner operator model. That's not the case for all of them, but most single unit operations are going to do the best when there is an involved owner. And in the beginning, it's probably gonna take more of your time as you get your sales ramped up, you get your team established, but it really depends on what sort of revenue that the business is producing. So as an example, some franchises aren't really designed or set up to do more than let's say $300,000 a year in sales. And so if that's the case, it's really hard to have that set up to be a semi-absentee model because it's hard to find quality talent at that level, like to find a manager, if you're doing only $300,000 a year in sales, you're not really able to afford you know, a high price point for a manager or something like that. So it affects the way that you run your business. So that's uh, really something that's important to think about. And then the next one, number six, is multi-unit franchise ownership. So multi-unit franchise ownership is when you own multiple franchise locations. Now, the way that this works is that you don't have to commit to that from the beginning. A lot of the times a franchisor will give you a discount on the franchise fees if you buy multiple territories or you sign up for multiple locations in the beginning. But usually in your franchise agreement, they give you a period of time in which you need to have those locations open. So they may say, okay, uh, the first location you have to have open within a year, the second location within 18 months, the third location within 24 months. But in this case, multi-unit franchise ownership is definitely gonna be more suited towards a semi-absentee franchise model or an executive run uh, franchise model. Because think of it as an example, if you have three different franchise locations or territories or units, and let's say each franchise location would have staff of 10 to 15 people, maybe with a manager in each location, well now you have 10 to 15 in each one, you have 45 team members or staff members so if someone leaves from one of the ones that you own, maybe you can have some of your staff help and cover up the other location. Or if a manager leaves, you can have your best manager out of the two or the three helping to cover until you get that manager replaced. Or maybe because now you have three locations and you have, you're doing a lot more in sales, not only do you have a manager managing each location, but then you have an area manager that is then managing all the managers. So do you see how your brain can really start uh, turning in terms of what are all the different options? Now, obviously one of the downsides potentially is that a multi-unit franchise ownership is gonna require more money and more capital. I mean, obviously if it's a $300,000 to get one location open, to get three locations open, then that's gonna be $900,000 and you've gotta be able to have the capital, the resources, the funding to be able to support that. Now, last but not least, number seven, if you made it this far, kudos to you. That means you're a finisher. Most people do not watch um, all these videos and uh, watch it through the end. So kudos to you for watching it. Um, and if you're still here, uh, make sure to hit the like button. Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video. Subscribe to the channel below so you don't miss out on any of the content that I put out. 
and go to my website and grab my seven step blueprint to business profits in 60 days at tarikjohnson.com. Again, it's completely free. All right, so the last one is master franchise. Master franchise is a fascinating concept. So the way that a master franchise works is that you're actually buying the rights to a territory. So as an example, if I was gonna buy a master franchise for Orlando, let's say I buy to get the rights for all of Orlando, right? It's a certain amount of zip codes or area or geographic territory included. And so I, let's say I might pay a couple of hundred thousand dollars just for the rights to the territory. And then my main role and function is not necessarily to open up franchises within that brand. It's actually to recruit other franchisees. So what I'm doing is I'm out there recruiting and trying to get franchisees to sign on as franchise owners to open up within that territory. And when I do that, then as a master franchisee, you get a portion of the upfront franchise fee. So these days, franchise fees can range, but I'd say the average franchise fee is probably twenty-five to $30,000, the upfront fee to get you the rights to be able to operate a unit or location. So you get a percentage of that, and then as these individuals open up their locations, their territories, you're able to get a percentage of the royalty. So if the royalty is 7%, maybe you get 3% of that royalty or 4% of that royalty. So if you're able to build up a territory that has 25 or 30 locations and is doing, let's say, an aggregate of uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 million dollars in sales between those locations, then you get to benefit in that growth and at, at some point, uh, you can actually sell the rights to that territory, resell it to someone else. Now, as part of that, what you're doing is you're helping to support those franchisees. You're helping to coach them on how to run their business, how to operate their business, uh, what, to, what to do when they have issues and challenges, how to grow their sales, all of those things. So it's a really interesting role and, and really for someone who you know, has probably more of a high level professional experience uh, maybe been in like an, an executive role and has the capital to be able to buy a territory in a location because sometimes it can take a while to grow or build up. So those are the uh, the seven different types of franchise ownership. Hope you got some value out of this video. If you have some questions, drop me a comment below and let me know uh, what type of franchise ownership uh, do you resonate with? Which one do you feel like makes the most sense for your situation and what it is that you're trying to accomplish? Very curious to know where you're at. I'll see you on the next one.